Hello and welcome to part two of our search for the ultimate portable astrophotography setup. I'm Jeff with EarthAndSkyPhoto.com and welcome to our YouTube channel. I'd ask you to like and subscribe so you get future content and updates on these astrophotography setups and tips and tricks as we pursue them. If you remember in part one, we started to evaluate the Ioptron SkyGuider Pro as a, not only a sky tracker, but also as the ability to auto guide it, Sky Guider Pro. We wanted to see how good it did at guiding, remembering that right ascension is the only drive motion that it has. We looked at the 85 millimeter on the ZWO ASI 294 camera, guided by the 120 ZWO mini cam and the 120 millimeter mini guide scope from ZWO. So, but if you recall some of my criteria, I really wanted to get into a focal length that really was a little more intimate and that's where the Red Cat 51 comes into play. It's a 250 millimeter focal length. It's a Petzl design, so it has a nice flat field near the uh, focal plane. It's an F 4.9 and it just has a lot of features that really are accommodating for the astrophotographer. So this part two is a follow-up to part one where we really evaluate the red cat on the Ioptron SkyGuider Pro mount as an extremely portable, all in one, the ability to be carried out in one piece, quick setup, great for mobile astrophotography, or I can put this in an area that it's difficult to access my southern sky. I have, I have a hard time getting below zero degrees uh, in my backyard, so I can get there from my driveway. So this setup has a lot of practical purpose to it. I like the focal length, and we did a little bit of uh, in the field experimentation with it, and here's how those results came out. On a beautiful fall evening last night, we were out with the first light for the William Optics Red Cat uh, 250 millimeter. Everything went uh, really well. We ended up with uh, a scale back to five minute sub-exposures after uh, they, they proved to be the tightest stars. 10 minute sub exposures were somewhat inconsistent with regards to um, tight stars on the auto guiding with the Ioptron. But so far with the Ioptron and the uh, red cap, you can see with the counterweight all the way down, it really pretty much balances it out. The only thing pulling are the uh, dew heater straps, but if I go to a upward inclination, I generally have to end up with the counterweight somewhere around this position. And then if I rotate the scope a bit toward the zenith, then this ends up being a pretty well balanced setup right here. So, with no locking. So that one counterweight works pretty well with the Red Cat and the ZWO Mini Guide Scope and dew heaters with the 294 camera. What I really like about the Red Cat, as you can see here, you have some focus markings on, um, this is my focus point with the 294 with this type of spacing. And you'll see in the images here in a minute that everything was really square across the field uh, all the all the stars were sharp across the field we're gonna have another run at this tonight we have uh, really nice conditions and we're gonna continue with our uh, m31 with the red cat on the ioptron and um, just continue to add more data and do some a little bit more experimentation with uh, guiding and uh, guide scope settings and um, see how the ioptron performs This was our first target with the Red Cat 51 on the Ioptron SkyGuider Pro. Of course, this is M31. And what I really wanted to show you here is the optical performance in the extreme corners. Of course, this is a, an APS-C size sensor on the ZWO ASI 294. So, but it easily covers that entire field with very little uh, light fall off and vignetting and of course 
the stars are just absolutely perfect corner to corner. This is with the Astronomic CLS CCD filter. Okay, we have changed uh, targets and we are now on M45 and surrounding nebulosity areas with the uh, William Optics Red Cat 51 on the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. And we are, uh, our guiding's hanging in there. It's, as you can see, uh, we're okay in the right ascension, a little bit less than an arc second. The seeing's not great. Um, if I go by the the full width half max over here, I'm around three full width half max on my guide star of uh, 237 peak. It might be a little bright, but it's, as you can see, it's really close to uh, the center of the field. So I wanted to stick with that. But one of the things I wanted to show you was the edge to edge. And there's no aberrations really to speak of. Anything you would see in elongation would be something uh, of a guide error. And the stars just look fantastic corner to corner. And this is with the light pollution filter on as well. So I'm really impressed with the optical performance of the Red Cat and can't wait to process this, uh, this data. So as you can see with the 294 ZWA SI camera on the Red Cat with the Ioptron, results are pretty fantastic. I was very happy with that. Five minute exposures through a light pollution filter it was unity gain on the uh, on the CCD camera, so I didn't really boost the gain in. There's always that opportunity to boost gain, even if I go to a STC duo narrowband filter. What you see set up here is my full frame Sony A7R3 full frame camera. I wanted to get that under the stars for a real world test. We have to hold off. We're here in November and our weather's starting to break down. We're heading into a moon period. So I wanted to really give this a fair and legitimate shot at a good target so it can put together some quality data. So we will revisit the full frame coverage of the Red Cat 51 in a future video. So there are a couple of little tidbits I'd like to share with you. First off, does this meet my criteria for an ultimate portable astrophotography setup? It, it absolutely does. It's one piece, one unit can be carried out in one trip typically carry out the electronics in a sec second trip, but this works fantastic. And this, it's a focal length that's very versatile. If the field of view is even bigger than the 250, I can certainly mosaic together a couple of frames or more. And I love the optical performance of the 250. This certainly outperforms my 85 millimeter Rokinon uh, lens on the edges for sure. And the Hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed that it provides a great full frame coverage as well. With the most recently announced Canon RA uh, electric uh, no shutter full frame uh, electronic camera, maybe that's an opportunity to put that on the Red Cat 51. A couple of little things that you have to work around. If you're like me and you're coming from a go to mount background and you're using plate solving and you're able to really dial in location of what might be some faint, very hard to find objects otherwise, you're gonna to have to really get good at star hopping to utilize the, the Ioptron Skyguider Pro mount to hand position your target, okay? The other thing that I would like to improve, I'm not sure William Optics offers a declination a controller piece here. I'm gonna see if that might answer one of my critiques, but here's, here's the critique. So when you're trying to position the, uh, the scope in a field of view and you loosen the declination for a rotation, this is very coarse. It doesn't have any refinement to it at all as far as 
you being able to hand position. And we're try if you're trying to replicate a framing that you had done the night before or last new moon or whenever your last imaging session was, this is a hand positioning of the declination. So that can be very tricky. Not only when you get it, you can watch live view on your iPad to uh, get, get your reference points. But the other thing is there's some backlash when you go to lock down the declination axis. So that moves the, the uh, pointing uh, as you're tightening that down. So it's a little less fun, refined as what we'd like to have, especially when you're used to both right ascension and declination hand control uh, options in a less than uh, you know 1x sidereal motion. So other than that, the scope is fantastic, the setup is fantastic, the ioptron is fantastic. I did add over part one, I did add the uh, ioptron tripod, which is absolutely perfect for the, for the situation. But I would have no trouble traveling with a tripod uh, that I had, the Gitzo that I had earlier. Uh, that, that would work with this setup, but this is a fantastic setup. I just leave it set up, ready to go, whenever the, uh, the sky conditions cooperate. And uh, so I can't recommend this enough. This is a fantastic, quick setup, tra travel. Let me show you this. I haven't put it together yet, but I just got it. And the, Pelican 1485 air case. So the entire setup, whether it's the full frame Sony camera or whether it's the ZWO ASI 294 camera, that whole setup will fit right inside this Pelican 1485 air case, just like that. There's airline transportability for your Australia trip, your Aurora trip, your uh, Africa trip. Believe me, this is, this is my airline transportable scenario. Of course, the Ioptron can pack very simply in a luggage. Tripod, your normal collapsible tripod's gonna fit in your check baggage. This is a really nice, I think, airline portable setup that I'm anxious to give it a try in the future on an international trip to a great dark sky. So that's my uh, part two. What I will do is follow up with the full frame coverage that's available on the Sony a7R III camera on the Red Cat 51. And I hope to be able to get that in the next new moon. And in the meantime, subscribe and like the video, please. Also check me out on Astro Ben. My name is Jeff Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. On Instagram, you can find me under Jeffrey Ball. And of course, on earthandskyphoto.com. But thanks so much for joining me. I hope you got something out of this video where we explore ultimate astrophotography setups. And I hope you uh, have a great time under the skies and good luck imaging your next astronomical target.